So what's the truth of me that can make me cry? When I commit to that, what am I negating about, negating with my intimacy? What am I confining with my intimacy? <clears throat> Do we always cry over stuff that hurts? No. In fact, most of the time for me, what always gets me is someone winning. Victory. Someone who struggled, that overcame something, that gets me way more than something hurts, especially in my own life. That the things that I have overcome, the successes I have, however far and few between they may be, have always impacted me more than my failures and than the things that hurt. They bring up a release for me, right? So if I'm sitting there and going, I have to get to something sad in order to bring out this intimacy in this moment, I am doing what to my choices? Yes, minimizing, constricting them. And the minute I constrict those levels of choices, what loses? The details. They automatically go out the window because my choice is here. I have to be in pain. Instead of my connection to this moment of release, even though it's sad, might be sad or painful for the character, is beautiful for me. Then my choices start to what? Open up and expand. All because I was authentic to my intimacy, to what I connect to inside myself. Now, I don't have to figure this out. I don't have to analyze myself up and down to know the things that connect to me. Why not? Why don't I have to be a perfect, brilliantly healthy, composed human being to know how I'm intimately affected? Because some of you have this myth that you have to be completely, fully accepting, wonderfully adjusted, you know, clear on all the things that hurt and don't hurt. You're certain that that has to be for you to have authentic and clear truth. Now, what's the things you get to do? Well, Sorry. Yes, say it. Well, I have a feeling like maybe you don't have to know exactly or accept it all, but you do have to be in touch with it. So yeah. And embrace it, right? That it's there. Well, embrace. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Embrace is, that's real healthy. You can get to embrace. You're doing really well. <laughs> really well. Yeah, but, but in order to use it, if it's such a trauma that you put it away and you can't access it. If, can can I, you really not access it? Really? No, I think you can, but for me, for instance, I really experienced that I had to somehow, um, allow, like to allow myself... Yes, to have critical it. word, right? You've yeah. given yourself permission, right? And what else? You got, you didn't have to get in touch. You did what? Acknowledge it. That's the ah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. It is not about even accepting it, right? My dad abused me from when I was five to when I was 11 years old, sexual abuse. So it's even more weirder, it's incestuous. There's a whole thing around this, right? Now I've been in therapy since I've been five years old. So in the commitment of that, I thought artists had to really be fucked up drug addicts to get in touch with that, right? And to be able to express it. But really what I learned was the minute I acknowledged it, the minute I said, oh yeah, that happened. That was the first step of letting it out. How I proceed from there is no longer artistic. Yeah. It's psychological, getting in touch, acceptance, moving forward. Mm. That is psychological. That's the stuff that I do in therapy. My job as an artist is to go, yeah, to myself, not to the world, yeah. not to any director, or you know what I mean, or writer, or any, to myself. Because the self-acknowledgement let it show up. Acknowledgement opened the door to give me permission. Yeah. So when we force ourselves, or we think, and this happens a lot, well, nothing bad like that has happened to me. So I can never play a character like that. I'm like, yes, but we've all been ashamed. Right. right? We've all been hurt. We've all been lied to by our parents. Not because they meant to, but because they're human and not perfect. And the more that I acknowledge it, I can give over that same sensation to a character, right? Yeah. If I try
try to figure it out, dissect it, deconstruct it, know how it works on me, then I'm just thinking about that. Right. And I'm no longer creating. May I ask you a question? Sure. How was it for you to um, allow yourself to use a memory like that for your art? I didn't. I didn't use a memory like that. I used okay. imagining the perfect family. Okay. And that got me there. I saw them. I saw the perfect father, who wasn't there for me once a year, but was there consistently. I saw the perfect mother, who didn't need to work like a crazy person to raise a single child. I saw them together, happy. I saw the dream of what I wanted them to be through my imagination, and that broke me. Because that was never going to happen to me. It was not my life. And that brought up this acknowledgement. So then, once I got to that, then sense memory work became a little, a little easier. But I had to start with my imagination because that's my technique and true to my intimacy. And part of that is because as a kid, that was where I was safe, is in my imagination. It was the only place I was safe. I had no other place of full honesty, openness, sharing, except in my like this vision, my dream world. I was only a child too, so I'm fucked already, right? Because I'm sitting there making up imaginary friends. You know, they're all having dinner without me. That was really bad. You know, when everyone's eating and they're like, well, Carl, can I ask them, can I come? They're like, no. Like, you guys are my creation and you're rejecting me. You're rejecting me? Like, it got really bad. But I realized the detail that my imagination provided was a, a way in which for me, to connect to my intimacy. So that's why this technique is not inside out. We don't believe in method here. We think it's process, you know? A lot of people go, well, you know, it's method. I'm like, no, because method isn't even method. None of those guys from the group theater would consider it method. 